U.S. has done to Panama and packaging the presidency. Our next focus tonight is a look at the Reagan administration's campaign of economic pressure to oust General Manuel Antonio Noriega from power in Panama and the devastating effect it has had on that tiny country. The four months of sanctions have sent Panama's economy into a tailspin. Our correspondent Charles Kraus has followed this story and his report begins in the city of Cologne. Cologne is located at one of the world's key commercial and strategic crossroads, the Atlantic Gateway to the Panama Canal. Like Panama itself, Cologne's economy and its history have long been closely tied to the canal and to the United States. The Hotel Washington, for example, was built for Teddy Roosevelt when he first came to Cologne more than 75 years ago. Today, there's still a fine view of the harbor, where ships from around the world wait to transit the historic waterway. Normally, many of them would also unload cargo in Cologne. But three months after the United States imposed economic sanctions, the docks are virtually empty. At the Cologne Free Zone, a vast duty-free port not far from the canal, some $4 billion worth of merchandise is normally bought and sold each year. But because of the sanctions, business activity is down by at least 20%, and many firms have begun to lay off their employees. Many businessmen fear the sanctions meant to oust Panama's strongman, General Manuel Antonio Noriega, may instead destroy Panama's economy. Alfredo Maduro owns an import-export business in the free zone and is an outspoken opponent of the Noriega regime. He says he's worried about the future if the sanctions continue. I see uh, a lot of unemployment. We'll be reaching maybe a 30% unemployment in the next three to four or five months. I see a lot of violence in the streets, not political violence, because we, in general, we are very uh, non-violent people as we've shown up to now. But the violence that's going to come is because of hunger, because of medicines not available, because, in general, because there's no work. The U.S. sanctions have probably had their greatest impact and caused the greatest hardship in Cologne slums, in neighborhoods like this one called Vietnam. Many of the poor are descendants of Jamaicans, brought to Panama at the turn of the century to dig the canal. Even before the current crisis, unemployment here ran upwards of 30%. Since the sanctions, conditions have gotten dramatically worse. Father John McElvray is an American priest who's lived in Cologne for almost two years. Soup kitchens, he runs, are now feeding upwards of 3,000 people a day. That compares to about 100 a day before the crisis began. Do you think it was a mistake for the United States to use economic sanctions to try and get rid of Noriega? I think it was a mistake because it uh, well, obviously hasn't, hasn't resulted. It's, uh, it's not hurt General Noriega. It hasn't hurt the armed forces. It hasn't really hurt the government. It has hurt, it's hurt these people that are in line to, to get their soup for the day. Pablo Tholosinos looks at what's happened in Panama from a different perspective. He's managing director of the Cologne Free Zone and a close political associate of General Noriega's. This is the first time, I think, I might be wrong, but this is the first time in the history of the United States that a government of the United States is helping to destroy a capitalist country. Rafael Arosamena is a businessman and opposition leader in Cologne who says he expected the U.S. economic pressure would work. The United States did not finish the job. Right now, the situation is that they have left the economic, political and economical problems of Panama in limbo. 
As it's turned out, the Reagan administration's failure to oust Noriega is a textbook case of flawed analysis and inadequate intelligence. From the very beginning, the U.S. strategy was also undermined by competing interests and fundamental contradictions. As a result, with one hand, the administration imposed economic sanctions to try to force Noriega out. But with the other, it undercut its own policy, continuing to spend money in Panama as usual. The Panama Canal, for example. When the crisis began, the White House ordered that canal payments worth $7 million a month be withheld from the Panamanian government. But since March, the Panama Canal Commission, controlled by the U.S. government, has flown in an estimated $12 million in cash to pay its employees. That money has gone directly into the Panamanian economy and has also indirectly, through taxes, helped finance and run the Noriega regime. At Fort Davis and other U.S. military bases in Panama, 12,000 GIs have continued to receive cash for their paychecks. Throughout the crisis, as usual, the soldiers have been allowed to spend their money off base, while the Army has continued to buy food and other supplies on the local economy. Meanwhile, Noriega has found ways of his own to get around the sanctions. The regime, for example, has issued tens of millions of dollars worth of government checks. For the most part, they're paychecks issued in small denominations. Since the crisis began, they've become a kind of unofficial currency. The checks can be used to pay telephone and electric bills, buy food and pay taxes. Still, there's a fair amount of grumbling, even among government employees, because the checks are not easily exchanged for cash. What Noriega has managed to do is outmaneuver the United States by substituting what are essentially worthless government checks for U.S. dollars. In fact, Noriega's ability to pay government workers and the military has ensured their loyalty, and so far, his survival. Meanwhile, many of those who oppose the regime have lost their jobs, and ironically, the sanctions have hurt the opposition more than the government itself. How many employees we, the government has laid out? How many? How many? None. I haven't fired anyone from here. Anyone. But how many the private businesses have fired? Who are the people who are hurt with these sanctions? And uh, it's a shame that it has, this has happened. Alfredo Maduro vows to continue his active opposition to Noriega, but he acknowledges the cost to his business, to himself, and to his employees is high. The month of April, the employees took 15 days off without paying. So we worked on a 50% basis. We had 50% 50, 50 of them come in for two weeks and 50% another group. The month of uh, May, we had to close down the entire operation. The layoffs have had a ripple effect throughout the economy. Shops on Boulevard Street are empty. But despite growing unemployment among the middle class and in the slums, there's no evidence Noriega has been able to convert the economic hardship caused by the sanctions to his own political advantage. Do you think most people like Noriega or most people against Noriega? Okay, most people don't like him. Most of the people don't like him. Why is that? Because he's been investing them back in the country. Everything he's doing in the country is not, not good for we. It's bad for we. Wilma James lost her job caring for the children of a middle-class family when the crisis began. Now without an income, she depends on food from the Catholic Church to feed her five young children. They live in a one-room tenement that's been condemned. It was at Wilma James' apartment that we learned firsthand how Noriega deals with those who disagree with him. Just as we were about to begin an interview, the apartment was surrounded by the secret police who demanded our credentials. 
even though our papers were in order, we were led away at gunpoint, detained at police headquarters for over an hour, and probably followed during the rest of our time in Cologne. What happened to us is not unusual. Noriega has been more than willing to use intimidation when necessary to keep himself in power. One of the first to be arrested in Cologne, Dr. Alfredo Ellers, a prominent physician and opposition leader. Or was there a specific charge? No, they don't, in any moment, they make any kind of, of charge. They only put me in jail because I, they say that I tried to put out the, the government. And they don't tell me nothing. They only put me in jail, and they don't respect any of my political rights. And I asked for a, for a lawyer and for a phone call, and they say me that I don't have any kind of right. Every time that there is a, a demonstration, the leaders are picked up days before the demonstration secure just to intimidate the rest of the population. They are put in jail for, for a few days. They are intimidated. Their families have been intimidated. Opposition to Noriega remains strong, but the organized opposition movement to Noriega, called the Civilian Crusade, has all but been destroyed in Cologne and throughout Panama. Shattered with it, long-held beliefs about U.S. power. After almost a century of U.S. domination, most Panamanians thought that when the President of the United States said Noriega had to go, by now Noriega would be gone. Today, what's striking is the extent to which Panamanians at both ends of the political spectrum have been embittered by that failure, and as a result, have begun to reassess their views of the United States. I wouldn't call it anti-American, but definitely disillusioned as far as the power of the United States is concerned. They're, they're in, a real, in a real quandary right now. What are they going to do? They can't. It looks obvious that the United States economically at least can't force the general out, so they'll have to look for other ways to do it. The way the government of the United States has acted in handling the Panama situation and trying to give it a solution has been backfiring, and has been back backfiring for 11 months. It's not now, not this last round of conversation. It's been 11 months of strikes and more strikes and he's, uh, President Reagan has striked out maybe for nine innings, and his time is over. I think that all of us, even those who have been uh, close to the United States and sympathetic to the United States, we will always look, and our generations and our children, we'll, we will always look with some kind of uh, 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 some kind of doubt or resentment to the United States. We won't trust 100% our relationship anymore. What would it take to get rid of Noriega? Well, really it's out of our, our hands. I think it's, it's a decision that the United States government now that really removed this from the hands of the Panamanian opposition has to decide what they're going to do. And, but personally, I think, I'm so discouraged, I think what their attitude would be to ignore it to see if it goes away. So you're suggesting that if the United States attempts to ignore it, and what you've said about the opposition being discouraged and intimidated, then you seem to be suggesting that Noriega will probably remain for some time to come. This is, this is almost a fact. That's what you believe? Yes, that's what I believe. Today in Washington, the State Department took a small step backwards in its sanctions campaign against Panama. It announced that for humanitarian reasons, it would allow U.S. companies to go ahead with Social Security payments to Panamanian employees.